All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, December 17th School Building Committee meeting. Uh, we do have a quorum tonight, and uh, we have several things on our agenda. Uh, the first order of business, I would like to uh, approve the meeting minutes from December 3rd. December 3rd. Make a motion that we approve the December 3rd meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Abstained. One abstention. Two abstentions. So that should be 402. All right. There were a few action Aye. items from, the, uh, from our meeting on December 3rd. Uh, first, um, the uh, committee was to review the draft uh, PSR meeting schedule, uh, and that's in our agenda meeting uh, handout tonight, uh, and it's on our uh, on agenda uh, as well to conclude on our uh, schedule for our meetings for the next phase. Uh, second, uh, I was to um, contact the MSBA relative to their signing of the FSA amendment. Uh, they've we've signed that. Uh, amendment and that's and returned it and that's part of our agenda package tonight as well uh, third um, uh, as an ongoing item was to work with Kent and um, uh, Flansburg to understand what consultants needed to be retained during the PSR phase um, site consultants uh, and we'll have a little discussion about that uh, later on um, next action item um, uh, Kent and Betsy were to finalize uh, their um, uh, memo on the gas um, um, at, um, at Borndale as well as the, the gas moratorium. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about that tonight. Um, next action item, uh, Kent and Betsy were to provide a little bit of more information relative to costs for LEED and there's a handout for us tonight to go over. Uh, next action item, uh, Peter was to contact the moderator relative to the process for vacant uh, seat filling uh, for committee membership. Um, and maybe when uh, uh, we can hear from Peter later on on, on that. Um, next action item, I was to reach out to the community center in Born TV uh, to make sure that our um, PSR phase meetings uh, could be videotaped. Uh, I've done that, um, and once we finalize our schedule, I'll send that to them. Um, and then the last action item, um, I was to um, keep on the schedule, or our agenda rather, the discussion of the technology used during the open meeting, uh, and Jim was to forward the draft policy uh, to all of us relative to the technology used during the open meeting. Uh, and so Jim forwarded that, and we have that on the agenda for a later on discussion. That, that's it for the meeting minutes. Okay. We don't have any invoices or commitments? Or uh, yes, we, we do, do have um, um, one yep, we have um, warrant, warrant number three. It's in our agenda handout. Tasha, did you get a? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's for ongoing uh, feasibility phase services. Uh, two invoices, um, one for uh, Sims, Manny McKee, and uh, the other for Flansburg, uh, both totaling uh, $38,600. Okay. I should vote. So I'll need a motion on approving the. If there, or is there any discussion first? These are just the, the two services. So we'll need a, a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stained? Unanimous? Okay. We'll have to sign that afterwards. Pass that, that around while we're now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm signing now. Um, uh, yes. Um, so the next agenda item is the discussion of the PSR phase schedule. And that's um, the first document in the agenda. Uh, the schedule looks um, the same as we had two weeks ago, um, with the exception of the April 7th uh, community form number six. Um, that uh, was scheduled on a Thursday night, April 7th, but that's the night of <coughs> the, the uh, high school performance. Uh, so we um, move that to April 6th, which is a Wednesday night. Um, so if we can just spend a moment to make sure that these dates work, we should finalize the schedule and that'll set us off for our, our meetings for January through March. Or is it through the middle of April? Through the middle of April. Okay. <coughs> is April vacation outside of this? Yes. Okay. <coughs> April 6th is a school committee meeting typically, but um, I don't think it's, it, I, I, the varied attendance and the number of these, I think that it doesn't won't interfere with that. What about the 18th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. School vacation. <coughs> What's on the 18th? February, February 18th. February. Oh. Could be this meeting. Right? right, but it's a building committee meeting. It's not right. a. Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking if that's okay for the committee. For everybody. Okay for me. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just, I'm just one voice. I'm one voice. Okay. Well, it sounds like a majority's fine with that, so. March 17th is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Nelson? I will be here. I can't do two of them. <coughs> February 4th and February 18th. Okay. These are all set up on our Thursday night meetings every other week. Is the schedule then acceptable? And should we post it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Is there any other discussion about any of the dates? I heard March 17th. <laughs> All right. So we should approve this. I mean, if something comes up, then we'll have a reasonable amount of time to, to change it and post it. And uh, But this looks like a good format. So okay. right. So we'll I'll, with uh, this. I'll coordinate with the community center. And mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, our next agenda item is the discussion of the community forum number three. Yeah, we had a, uh, at the People's School, we had a great turnout uh, last Tuesday. And um, started off with a, a tour to those who, who wanted it. <laughs> had a few takers there that uh, toured around the school uh, with Cheney. And we introduced the project uh, to the community um, and recapped the previous community forums that we had with the visioning in the beginning and then the existing conditions and then went into the design options, the four main options with the different enrollments and configurations um, within the study. Then from there, went into each individual option uh, in detail and expressed some of the pros and cons that were discussed in the educational workshop um, uh, meetings we had and here with the school building committee. Um, and after evaluating, uh, going through all the options, we had uh, gone through the preliminary cost matrix with the community 
and then open it up for questions and then an overall uh, participation. And so there was many questions and then uh, which were um, um, very good to hear. Some had to do with the cost that they were seeing for the first time on the matrix. And then we went into each of the pros and cons uh, with the community on each of the options and heard, heard some, some of the same pros and cons that were echoed uh, in this room and elsewhere. And um, overall, was a, I thought it was, it was a very good turnout. Um, open up for anybody who was there who would like to share their thoughts on it. I think the um, people that went on the tour were, you know, pretty, like they liked the feel of the school, but I think they recognized the challenges with the structure and some of the issues that we face. So. up recently that we, um, the last time, I think the last time we met here, we had talked about having some kind of a survey to give out to people that maybe would have been something, sorry, that, that would have been something that might have even made it more um, engaging with the people that were there. It was just a quick little, I remember the very first community meeting we had, it was more interactive because we were able to split up into small groups and get discussions mm -hmm. going. I don't know if we can do that in another meeting. I think that was I effective. think it's something yeah to consider in a future meeting right sure, yeah sure. but it was definitely nice to have the the feedback people willing to speak up for a bit okay it was informative right okay. and that meeting included a lot more people from the community who don't have children in school yet yes. mm -hmm. so they certainly got the message that this is something that's coming up um, and that their children will benefit from this so it was nice to see new faces who really don't have anyone in the schools currently and to be a part of that conversation I think I've seen a natural progression of uh, these meetings. <coughs> you know, they've been building momentum. Mm -hmm. and the momentum isn't really to make the final decision. The momentum is really to try to understand what's going on, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and just to, for public consumption, we did have child care there. We had some great students, uh, middle and high school students there to help out. And so we look forward to having that in the future as well. But <coughs> there's good momentum to try to understand why we're doing this, what this is all about. Um, because it's amazing to me still, you can talk to people and they have no idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, people who actually even work within the school system, they have no idea that this is even underway. Um, so it's really good to build that informational momentum that we're, that we're doing, and I think it's working out well. So. Right. <coughs> That's right. Thank you. The students who um, did the childcare, by the way, I just have to give a little plug because they were phenomenal. My kids <laughs> had the time of their lives. They talked about it, you know, the whole night, even the next day. <coughs> so um, congrats to those kids. They did a fantastic job. Over the construction alternatives. Yeah, I thought I'd actually go over some of the handouts first, yep. and uh, just some follow-up. So on the uh, the gas, we heard back from the gas company. So at Porndale, there is capacity at the street, so there's no change. They re they reviewed the loads that were given to them, and so the the gas line at the street has capacity to support the uh, a new addition, um, the increased enrollment. You know, they mentioned you'd have to perhaps replace the meter and do some other items, but on the street, uh, that option's good. Right. And then um, they're still working away on the uh, the P-Bowls with the capacity with the uh, moratorium. But the conversation is right now the load won't exceed, the new load won't exceed what's there because it's it, it's beefed up enough to accommodate that. So that's, we're gonna wait for some follow-up on that. But Porndale's all set as far as capacity at the street. Okay. And. Uh, I just want to give a little couple items I needed to follow up on. And this document is um, Green Building, the benefits. And it, it's a few years back, but it's still referenced a bit. This was uh, um, a, a Massachusetts-based uh, document. And this is really the start of the conversation about the benefits of Green Building and some of the costs that may go along with it. Um, it goes into detail about the uh, different types of building systems, mechanical, electrical, and then just the overall uh, benefits from green design, such as the natural daylight and how that promotes um, you know, better learning. And also, it does start to touch upon the different categories of lead with a percentage of uh, 
what it could cost over a conventional building. So that's in there, but I just want to say that that number always fluctuates. Here they're saying it would max out at 2% if you want for a lead uh, silver building. But again, there's different, different components that will make that go up and down uh, based on what design is developed and site conditions. So, but this is worth reading and then we'll still work at providing more information on this. Uh, but what it does reference, I just want to say one thing, is, is, is the overall payback with having the building systems designed efficiently. And that's really where the cost savings is and the operational uh, uh, cost of the building. So it's a little upfront with the efficient systems, with the boilers and all that, and the exterior envelope. Um, but then there's the payback over the years. So just, just have a read and then we'll, we'll continue this conversation to provide documents when we, um, when we can put them together. Okay. Okay. And uh, any questions on that? Okay. So what we have here are three, or uh, we have four um, summaries of some of the larger trades that went out there. Um, <coughs> The first one I'd like to go over. Now, these were the large documents that were forwarded to you. Uh, some are hundreds of pages. They're going to be in the binder. The full detailed report is also going to be in the binder, and that binder is going to be uh, posted and distributed to you also. But this is just a summary of, of some of the findings. And the first is the environmental site assessment. That's called the phase one assessment. And what that does, it looks at your, your site itself and neighboring properties and tries to understand if there's hazard material or uh, petroleum-based products that could have contaminated the ground. And that's really what it focuses on. And, and so what they do is they get all the records they can from the town. They look at maps that are created um, showing different, different areas from um, uh, even touched upon geological and aquifers. So it's a, it's a comprehensive report that not only is the hazardous material, but also touches upon the water first because, again, there's the water that could be associated with contamination. Um, so at the People's School, there is one item that was found, and that's an item of the underground storage tank that everybody's aware of. That's a 10,000-gallon uh, fuel oil tank that's underground. And it's on this list as a recognize environmental condition because there was a spill in 95 and we're trying to get more records on that and so we're still waiting on some documents from the fire department to close that out so in 95 if it was handled properly and we had the documentation we can take that that item off but um, in any future project that tank has to be removed um, and then it just notes some others there's a 17 gallon diesel fuel uh, incident that occurred on the site um, which was uh, resolved also touched upon the uh, Camp Edwards and how that is on the uh, uh, that's on the priority list for groundwater contamination something they've been working on over the years <coughs> and that's in the report and just to um, let you know they look at the impact area of that and the closest point is a half mile away from the site so they don't see any issues with Camp Edwards or there's a whole list of gas stations along MacArthur <laughs> that are also noted that had incidents, and they're all well documented. Um, so they don't see any negative impact to a project on your site, um, except the oil tank that'll have to be addressed. So Kent, just curious, where where on the premises is the tank? It's right out front, in between the bus drop off. It's in the island. It's in the island. It's in the island. Oh, okay. Yeah. Testing of soils or or, or um, no borings of any kind, because when um, the middle school was built, there was some um, trash material found sure. that had to be dealt with. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't anything. No, we don't test at, for at, that at this phase. We don't test for that at this phase of the project. It, they're just right now collecting information and letting us know that there is something here and it needs to be addressed in the future phase. But we don't test the soils at this phase. So, uh, you know, they, they do note in the, the, the uh, bleaching field that it was in the back where the building was built, where the addition was built, items like that, but um, no other soil-related findings. Okay, and then at Borndale, um, 
looking at the surrounding areas and the site itself, uh, there's nothing uh, that was found on that site. So that's a clean site. And they do want to note that the, looking at the aquifer map, that the edge, the property line of the edge is uh, within that aquifer protection area. So the DPW building is actually built in that zone and Bourne Dale is out of that. The parking lot's not included in that, but that's just something, information that's good to know and we can study that further when we, uh, if there's a project over there. So that's just a recap of the ESA. And the next is the traffic we can discuss. So niche en engineering conducted the traffic uh, analysis work at both the sites and that consisted of um, looking at the traffic circulation, access to the sites. Uh, they did traffic counts at intersections and they also did counts of parent uh, pickup and drop off. So we know that number. So if we look at a future design option, we know how to accommodate that load of the parents picking up and dropping off. So that's very important. And the reason they do the counts at intersections and understand the roadways is they want to know if there's any options that's going to create an issue or an impact to an intersection. So they also looked at two intersections over on the, uh, the Borndale options. They looked at uh, uh, Edge Hill and Route 6 and uh, Nightingale and Route 6, the two traffic lights. So they just want to take the counts there, understand what the increased load say on an option five, the worst case condition would be to those two intersections. And so they summarize that um, as actually being very minor uh, to that. And also they quantify the information they collected for the existing schools. They apply it to, again, two design options. Design option three, the worst case scenario with the all district over there with the fifth grade. So they added that increased volume to the parent pickup and drop off. And um, with that, there would be 177 vehicles that would drop off and 113 vehicles that would pick up. Uh, currently, you have 137 that drop off. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Currently, you have 53 parents that drop off. And so you can see the numbers do increase a lot because you have the entire Peebles Elementary School and the fifth grade. Um, but they say with the site circulation, the design can accommodate it. So we would look at strategies how to accommodate that additional queuing. Um, they're also looking at it and we're updating the traffic report that was submitted. They're also focusing on the pre-K, uh, the K-5 option on the Peebles because that wasn't uh, initially in play and it just was uh, rolled into the mix so they're looking at just the the roadways and the conditions if that fifth grade will will cause any issue on Trowbridge Road but their thought is right now in the big picture you're not increasing the volume of students because they're still over on the overall campus but they just want to study the any intersections over there and um, going into the next phase of the project this is base information enough for us to understand these options and the impact in some of the existing conditions. But there will be further traffic studies that will be needed uh, that may come from this group, may come from the community asking us to research some other items and also to understand, just as I said, the option for the fifth grade at Peebles. So that might be an additional um, um, service we'll need to uh, talk about in the next phase. During, and during the PSR In phase. the PSR phase, and there'll, there'll be a cost associated with that work. And um, just wanted to, to let you know that when it comes to traffic, we're gonna, we're gonna need some more traffic studied. And when it comes to the other consultants, we're, we're pretty good for where we are in the PSR stage. Maybe, maybe have to get ge uh, Geotech out there uh, one more time, but we'll see how it goes. But traffic is gonna be one of those items that we're gonna have to call up and, and get back out there. So, so, so you're talking, so looking, oh, sorry, so this is so yeah. looking down the road after tonight's meeting when we get to, to our three or four mm -hmm. options, our preferred options for the, the PDP submission. Um, our next meeting we'll want to talk about what are some of the uh, metrics or 
uh, additional information uh, that we'll want to gain and research for those three or four options to help us understand how to get to a preferred option. And so part of that discussion will we'll vet out some of the scope of what traffic, additional traffic study may need, may, uh, need to be. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Um, any questions on the traffic? Again, Just it's Just beyond the school property area, so including the bridge, accessing the bridge and rotary traffic. Coming that, back that's on. part of our evaluation. Right. Um, so I've had a lot of parents ask that, and yeah. I didn't know what the answer was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, you'll see that they that they when they did the counts at those two lights that are along Route Six going to the school. You know, they applied that worst case scenario. You know, with the all district going over mm -hmm. there, so that traffic volume they know, and they'll they can now use that to calculate other formulas. So, but that's a great yeah. example to bring up. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, um, so moving on to geotech. Um, so the work here is to investigate the subsoil conditions, uh, the bearing capacity, and, and that helps us uh, understand site drainage, <coughs> understand what kind of soils we have there that uh, aid with uh, drain in the site, parking areas, but also the uh, structural bearing of um, substrate we have there, and that helps determine what kind of foundation we'll have. Is it just standard spread footings <coughs> or is it something more uh, elaborate? So they did four borings at Peebles and what they found was the soils are uh, um, of uh, sand uh, deposits, which are good. It's good drainage soil and it's also good bearing. So that type of soil is extremely uh, uh, beneficial to the project and that's at both sites. Um, what they encountered. So knowing that in one of the borings is a map associated with this. In B3, they ran into some large boulders. So that's something to be aware of, what's going on over in B3. Um, but that's by the baseball field, where the children's play softball area is. Field. Oh, sorry, sorry, softball. the softball field, yeah. where the uh, play area is in the back of Peebles. Um, they have the ground water that was leveled average seven to eight feet below grade and when it comes down to it you can use standard spread footings and we wanted that information when we have the cost estimates prepared for this and that's why the uh, it's good to get in there early and understand what's going on with the soils and similar with Borndale um, Borndale again had uh, the, the sandy soils, which is good for the drainage and capacity. And the groundwater was uh, measured at the time. It's a seasonal fluctuation at 8 to 12 feet below the grade. So again, standard spread footings over here. And they didn't encounter any ledge right there that may prohibit, um, you know, blasting or anything other than that. So that's all good news on the geotech. So what that does is it, it, it just tested all those <coughs> original 14 <coughs> options and now we're down to seven, it tested those different areas. And so if going into the next phase, we'll look at that deep, that amount of information that may be enough to go on, or we may request to do a few more borings, knowing which options um, are preferred. It seems pretty good though, pretty consistent on yeah. both, on both yeah. sides. So. Yeah. And, um, and it's a win because there's the structural side, but also there's the site drainage side, which is great. So if, if your site drains, well with the sand, that's perfect. <coughs> okay, the last one is the hazmat, and Fuss and O'Neill conducted this. They looked at different areas of the building. Some of the, um, they looked destructive work, which means they just analyzed behind some of the materials that are not visible, was associated with the brick veneer, the roof, and the ceramic tiles. And you know the focus here is to look at lead paint, uh, the uh, ballast that may contain mercury, and also get an understanding for the uh, presumed PCBs that may be uh, within the school. And um, so what they have in a long report is they quantify what was found that, and it's known to the school, they have replaced windows and this company is <coughs> retained by the school currently to assess if a window needs to be replaced. Uh, so everything here is what's typical on a building 
this age, so there's no surprises here. Um, lead on the windows, there's areas that could, pr uh, could contain uh, PCBs, mercury uh, uh, containing light ballasts were quantified, and then all these samples um, that are noted here, caulking, damp proofing, it's a plaster, um, uh, were tested and they have asbestos, but you know everything right now is contained, everything is, is operational, but this is good information to have when we look at uh, the options with that building and also to create a cost associated with uh, abating those materials. So again, it's a really, it's a lengthy report with a lot of detail, uh, and this is just a summary of it. So that, that concludes all that. <coughs> So we'll move on to number six, review of construction alternatives. <coughs> that must be this handout. Yes. Yeah, it's all handout. So I think what we'll do is um, all the options are here. Right. <coughs> and we can go through it. This this is the per option is some more notes here in detail that you've seen in the past, especially on the floor plans. So nothing's changed. It's the same plans that have been reviewed here, but we've added added some more information. Uh, on the first page of the site plan, we have the organizational diagram, and the, uh, you can see the way the uh, the north and the sun orientation occur per option. And then the floor plans, what we did here is we took some of the key points that we've heard through the planning and we tried to key them to those areas. So the outdoor classroom, and we just wrote a note what is, is good about that, that you know, promotes collaboration and it's a great resource for the school that <coughs> limits distraction to the academic wings. And so this, these <coughs> just summarize what the plan is so what we can do is I can go into detail about any of these options um, if anybody has any questions um, or we can kind of dig into the evaluation if everybody's okay. But you have all the options here. <coughs> well, I, 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 my I, comment is that I think that you've taken everything that you've heard from us, from the community forum, and you've really, I mean, you can see that the details are emerging from that. Yep. Uh, so I, it, you know, I looked at it real quickly before, and I'm looking at it again. It's pretty consistent with what everybody's been presenting to you. So All right, great. It's, it's much appreciated. All right, great. Thank you. Question? Yes. Um, and the option 1A, <coughs> what brought this to mind was when the first design of the Borndale School was done and put out to bid, it was, it, it was designed as a kind of a pod unit construction with a lot of wall areas and hallways and a bridge and all kinds of things and the costs were just over the moon and it, and it looks like this proposed design um, has a bigger footprint in other words it's not quite to the degree that that plan was but it, it's like two almost two separate structures as, as I'm looking at this mm -hmm. um, is there any way to do this with a or, or would there be savings made with a building design more similar to the Borndale where it's just, you know. A well, every, every site's different and there's, there's a combination. There's the program that's required in the area mm -hmm. and then there's the site. So those are two main components, how they'll fit into it. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't a model school. This site is particular, but there's also the conversation of how the spaces work together academically and so this is a combination of all three. It's, it's the size of the building and the program. It's the siting. And it's also <coughs> takes what we've heard from the educational meetings and, and positions the pieces related to how the school would like to operate academically. Um, so there's always efficiencies. That doesn't mean that it's going to come in, you know, $10 million under what it is now. Uh, but that's something we're always going to be aware of in making it a very, very simple um, design. Uh, what you see here is a very compact footprint. And what it's doing is there's a clear separation from the community functions from the academic. 
And a lot of that has to do with using these functions without disturbing the academic wing. So the academic wing is just a simple bar and the community wing is just a simple bar. And just with that being <coughs> said, that's our that was the that's the process. Mm -hmm. And we'll always keep in mind of, of any efficiencies that we can develop as the plan gets developed. So right now this is really a it's a it's a concept that has the program on your site with the square footage. And then in the next phase, if this ends up being a preferred option, we're gonna look at developing further and defining defining the footprint. Uh, but right now, it's still probably at the 20,000 uh, foot level. Mm -hmm. I, I guess my concern is with both the, the previous two schools we've built in this town, we've had major issues getting um, getting voted at town meeting because of cost issues and design issues. Sure. And uh, I just see that <coughs> this community, especially in light of the recent override issue, being very uh, cost conscious mm -hmm. um, and looking to see that that we get the best bang for our buck. Sure. And I mean, no one wins if we get all the way down the road here and we can't get this thing voted. And that's why I'm, I'm just. And that's why we do the estimates so early on. So you, you get to see that. And, and that's the beginning of the conversation for all the options. And so that's what we're going to work on. But there's there's nothing here that's that's you know more extravagant than than you know a typical school as far as its layout and its materials. It's, it's a simple bar. There's efficiency in the way it can be organized structurally. This side uh, could be a block bearing wall with uh, steel joists for efficiency with a structure. The other could be a simple steel skeletal frame. So when we lay this out, we think about all those pieces. And so there's there's a, a lot of parts that'll come to play in the PSR phase <coughs> as we develop one of these options. Thank you. Yep. R Rich, I think, I think too, I, I, I tend to agree with you, um, and, it's, and it's sort of like a, a seesaw that you have to take approach because at, in one time, at one point, we're, we're talking about uh, like generalities of design and even budget, and I know they've thrown some numbers at it, but it all can be kind of whittled back and it, can, and it can move. So when we're looking at the two sites, we sort of have to take into consideration it could be the any design and it could almost be any budget and you know how how we go forward and i know that that's difficult too because you know you're on the other side of it saying well i'd like to see something that you know um is attached to that site more so than just a you know a box or an idea or just a a budget number so um the, there's a lot of juggling balls that you know they just can't land um but we have to still whittle our options down to what three or four um anyways and then you know hopefully we start making those you know balls land and firm it up and 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 get plenty of feedback with the community too so that it becomes a real project that people can get behind and and afford too i mean i i totally agree with you so um, yeah, let's see where it goes. There. Does anybody have any other comments on some of the options that need some explanation or further detail? Well, I didn't have uh, any questions about the options, but the um, on s on some of the. Uh, the evaluation criteria, I felt like uh, some of the subjects might have been a little general. Like I'll use, for example, uh, number 23, advantages to middle school. So when you're rating that, it depends, I guess, on which way you, what advantage in your mind. I know we talked about some advantages, but it, some of the categories didn't exactly spell out so I don't know how people voted like you know there was only a few of those but I just wanted to kind of point that right. like that one out but maybe that's a good it's segue to go to the next part of the of the meeting which is to kind of talk about our individual evaluations right. and how did, how did that go um, was it a, is it a good stepping stone to have 
to the further conversation about what what are our our top options or or flip it even to say what which options uh, we clearly feel um, we would <coughs> pursue. But I think for the sake of of, of our record, um, <coughs> we should go through the evaluation. And maybe there's a summary set of numbers that we can have from each of mm -hmm. our individual work that we did. Or yeah, I mean, I, I feel it would be if uh, how many enough in here have uh, filled it out? Yeah, I, f I filled it out. Yeah. Right in front of here. So I, I think it would be good. good. Everybody, excellent. So <coughs> what we c what we could do is um, we could go around by option, and if anybody wants to add some comments to that, so if we go around the room and just discuss one A, and just Jim, I think provide us with. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to handle that. Um. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> It be only because I have a public comment section, but I don't know if it can wait. Can it wait for that? Just a quick thing. Sure, comments? come up and use the mic and. Do I need to introduce myself? Yes, please. Susan Barracchini, Pocasset. Um, I was on the second building committee with Mr. Lavoy, and so I wanted to piggyback what you what you talked about. Uh, condensing the, f the footprint. One of the things that comes to mind is the separation of community activities and the academic community uh, activities. And what comes to mind is the makeup of the middle school, how the gym is on one segment and but still not so far away that everybody can't access it. Um, the other thing we have to consider is how long it will take students to get to those common areas, those community areas from the classrooms if they are so far apart because that's, and Ms. Norton and Mrs. Carpenito can talk to that more because they're working with those kids in that age group. To have them trek so far is important. But again, with that footprint, if it's something where a gymnasium could be skirted around um, the end of the building, I was thinking maybe even have it connect to uh, cafeteria where those two areas, doesn't matter how noisy they get because they're, <laughs> they're just ours. It's, it's natural to their environment, but yeah. that's I just want to let you know, and it kind of goes to both both the comments about just the design. Again, we're at kind of a general right. level. But when we go into the next phase, what we're going to do is we want to look at this one option and do test test two different designs for it. We will do that, but we'll also we're going to provide a cost for it because that's how you're going to be able to know if making it more compact. You know, something has to give here or there, but at least you'll have some options to look at. And you'll have cost to compare, so that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna do that. Okay. And that's what we we always do. So if there's four options selected tonight, or whatever the number is, we're gonna look at different designs for all of those. It's not not just this one. This okay. isn't. This is just testing the. Right. No, I totally get that. But where you where you've been so great, as Mr. Lamar said, you've been you've been visibly incorporating all the things that you've gleaned from the meetings, and that's important. And I just figured this was the moment to piggyback what Mr. Lavoy yep. said about um, that being an important element in the next set of yep, perfect things. okay thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you all right so i guess we're going to talk about option 1a first well let me take a quick poll of the of the group here should do you want to go each option, or is there are there options that we don't even need to discuss? I I don't know. What is there any certain pleasure? We can start with one A and just go from let's start there. with one A and so let's and go that. through. And I think if anybody wants to add a comment, this is the time. Okay. Before, before we do that, can I just ask a question? Is the issue with the middle school um, based on separating the fifth? from the 6th, 7th, and 8th, or is it, a, is it a space issue? Is the building <coughs> overutilized at this point? Uh, <coughs> in previous meetings, we've discussed at fifth grade that uh, uh, there was thought that when the building was first initially constructed, it was meant for 6th, 7th, and 8th. Fifth grade was kind of an addition to it. There are some unique spaces that are constructed in there that are now permanent classrooms that are not used for what they were uh, previously constructed for, and that there's always this belief that fifth grade should actually be at the elementary level. So we wanted to explore that in our feasibility study. Uh, because fifth grade is really at the elementary 
upper elementary grade. If you look across most communities, fifth grade is incorporated within their elementary schools, not their middle school. There are a few that are five through eight. There, may, there are many that are K through eight, um, but there are most of them are six, seven, and eight, or seven and eight at the middle school level. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so why don't we Why don't we go around the room and just talk about one A and just give us your your total, your bottom line total. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Oh. In my personal opinion, in the opinion of um, parents and members that I've spoken to of the town, um, I think overall the option one um, A is a good option in that. Um, it's on the people side that seems to be overwhelming for me anyway my interactions with people um, people are very passionate about having the two schools and it's not necessarily because of the sense of community as it is that people are shying away from the size of the Borndale school um, the proposed size of it is so big I think <coughs> um, people are having a hard time wrapping their head around it so the advantage one advantage I would say to 1A is that it keeps the school small but that could also be a disadvantage um, because it's very possible that maybe the projections would be off and all of a sudden here we are with a really expensive brand new school that is completely um, at capacity. So I think that needs to be kind of um, taken into account. <coughs> but that was my overall feeling on it. I um, like the size of 1A because it is a small school. I'm a proponent of small schools. I have been throughout my school committee days and building committee days. However, I'm not, uh, so the caveat to that is, I'm not sure that's where our town wants to travel in terms of finances. Mm -hmm. I do agree with Natasha that in a different option, I think is too big. But mm -hmm. for this option, I had a total of, I just added up my, numbers I had 47 um, but I like the new school however I'm not sure our town wants to finance that size school mm. great thank point. you um, I had for one a I think I had shared the, some of the same sentiments um, I am concerned that it is although I think smaller is better smallest is not <laughs> So, and that's how I feel about this option. Um, I, there's so many things I do like about it, the least disruption to the school mm -hmm. in terms of building it. If it's on this side, the subsidy that would come in raising peebles, which we wouldn't have on the other side. Um, the, this side of the canal, neighborhood school, so to speak, being able to utilize the resources of not just the middle school, but also the high school. Um, but I do, I am concerned that it is too small. But in terms of the rating, which, and that's kind of like tough about some of these criterion is that you have one question, but it's really huge question. Right. Mm. So for the size of the school, I actually had it as a one because it was least desirable in terms because it was too small. But, in, but my overall score was 58 for that building because of all the other mm -hmm. advantages. But, you know, taking a step back, I don't. I don't think money-wise, it's the best option. Mm -hmm. we'll see, uh, and we'll see how they all kind of play, play out, out at the yeah. end. Yeah. I think a lot of my comments would mirror what's been said so far. I think it's a very small building. I, I am fearful that with the projected number, it is at capacity right away. Um, I really liked out of the 250 options that this one was least disruptive to the current occupants at Peebles and the you know the the time I think spent on the project it would be a quicker project because you're not moving kiddos and shuffling everywhere um, and even creating some of the parking spaces and the new courts and just kind of everything around it was a was a good option but it was the size that was definitely a downfall did you tally up I did not I don't have my final uh, for me, this was my second highest vote getter. This was 50 points for me. Um, I think it was probably more of uh, uh, one of my responses was more balanced with the one, twos, and threes compared to other options. I think where it scored really low for me was uh, size of school, um, maximum building efficiency, 
um, because of the size, centralized uh, elementary resources, it obviously doesn't lend itself to, to that. Um, and I didn't believe that this would be a maximum use of MSBA reimbursement for this construction cost as well. Um, so it, it did, it does, it has a lot of positives to it, but I just think it's, that's why it's my second highest, but I just um, had some concerns about some, uh, as Danny said, some large uh, items that are listed in the um, criteria. So that's, that's my position. <coughs> I, I haven't tallied mine because there are certain areas that I haven't answered just because I think they were a wash for the, the various okay. options. Um, but I did rate that one high. Uh, but uh, again, I think that I, I think Jenny summed it up best is that smaller is better, but smallest is not. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that this is too small a building. I, I don't think we get enough bang for our buck with SBA. And uh, so I would agree that uh, this was a good one, but not the best one. Um, I, I have my tally here. I have 54. Um, I think some of the, crit the, the criteria that uh, scored the lowest that I had in was uh, the building efficiency um, and the cost of operation construction, you know, versus what the size of the building is for bang for the buck. Um, also, even in, uh, I had for uh, least environmental impact, I think the whole site is really going to have to be touched to do what we're talking about here because you have the existing building then you're building in front you're going to be building behind so that whole site has to be touched um, also in and in, in again this is just one of those uh, general uh, generality issues that I took with uh, resolves geographic separation by canal that was one of our headings here nothing resolves geographic separation by canal doesn't really matter for me what side of the canal it's on. As long as the canal's there, nothing resolves it. Okay. So, uh, that's the it's one called one. bridges. That's, that's the one <laughs> and, um, and as far as like, you know, uh, good points would be that it is a brand new school. It can be uh, what it needs to be. Um, and it does remain part of the campus that's there. Uh, I know that there's been some talk about that. Uh, and, but again, I think it's too small for what we're what we're really looking to ask uh, in the long term. So I think it's pie in the sky to have a nice brand new small um, elementary school. But I think you know when sort of the rubber hits the road that it's really just something that uh, is probably not financially feasible which you know you hate to go down that road but I think you have to be a little bit sincere about the options and I just think that it's probably not enough bang for the buck overall so okay I scored this my second <coughs> the second highest I had 49 was my score uh, probably mostly because it's a new building I don't really support any option that has to renovate people knowing the building is not still they do I don't think it's any that's my opinion any way to renovate or add on to that building makes any sense um, so I would say a lot of the same sentiments you know it's a smaller school but I think the new construction is favorable and be on this side of the on the other you know on the south side of the bridge I think is favorable from what my opinion when I hear from the people in the community that's all I have for you yeah, I, that, that was my second highest uh, score as well, uh, with a score of 53. Um, option 1G, I just totally discard. I, uh, based on the information I've seen in that building and read about in that, that, that building from different reports, I would never vote for and recommend anybody vote for a renovation of that building. I think it would be a nightmare and a real financial headache to the town. I think it could be a real disaster. So I really pretty much eliminated that option, option 1G. Um, I, most of what's been said I agree with. I think it's essential that we have a school um, on both sides of the canal for logistic reasons, and who knows what's going to happen in the future if, if there's a bridge issue, or um, I, and I don't <coughs> think the town would ever vote um, to, to, to remove this, a school there 
and just build at Borndale. Borndale might be the best option cost-wise, but I just don't think it would ever get voted. I gave it a very low score. Both 1A and 1G, <coughs> 37 equal. It's not big enough. I don't believe the amount of students, it'd be underbuilt before it ever opened. So it's a waste of money. It, uh, you build a bigger school, you always can fill it with something. I mean, there's <laughs> everything new technology coming out. I just don't think it's worth it, either one, 1A or 1G. Uh, I kind of voted um, based on, I, I actually had this one as a, my uh, second highest. I kind of voted based on the uh, feedback we received. I think it's I think it's early to to start rating options on a lot of this stuff that we don't necessarily have a lot of information on. So I I just kind of listened to the feedback. I went back based on I voted kind of based on the feedback we received, especially at the last uh, public forum. So uh, I, I I had this option um, as a uh, at 48. It was my second highest option, and uh, I do not. Uh, I think it's a I, you know I think keeping the school in the site is. A, I'm not gonna listen to the positive. This is everybody else has. So that that's thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Sure. Start with start with not. Oh, we don't have to start. No, we'll start with the positive. Okay. I don't like this one. <laughs> Me either. At all. I don't like anything about it. Do you have a number? I don't. Um, I started with ones, and then I just stopped rating it because I just, I don't feel Throw that it's 24? appropriate. Sure. Yeah. I want to keep a tally. Sure. The official no record. No problem. I would agree with Natasha. It's 24 for Mary Jo. What did you say for one G? Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, mine was, for one G, mine was um, 50. It's, I just think any, any disruption to students is not a good thing, especially <coughs> if it's going to be prolonged because of a renovation. Plus, I just, I just don't think it's worth it, given everything that we're going to run into. Well, it's just like any other renovation project, whether it's a house, a building, you never know what else you're going to run into until you get in there, which only drives up the cost. Liz? In order to give a number, I'll give it a 24. I, yeah, I, I struggled to find anything I really liked with this one at all. And again, I think the disruption to students is a, is a biggie <coughs> and what the staff will have to incur, you know, moving and um, just didn't care for it. For me, this was my lowest point getter. This was 41. And I think what it really, what really spoke to me about this one is that you really not if you want to talk, if you're talking millions of dollars, this one is just not, you know, I don't see the value for the little bit of change that you're making and taking off one annex and putting basically two other little sections onto the building and making it work. So this was my lowest point getter. <coughs> I agree. Um, it does have the neighborhood school advantages, the resources available in the school and all of that, but I rated it at 30. Uh, it's just too small. I, I just can't support anything that we're going to do with the existing building. Okay. Uh, this one tied for my lowest score, 42. Um, the few bright points it has, which are very few, are that um, it still keeps the, the campus, uh, and then it also would maximize the reimbursement because it's a condition renovation. Um, and uh, you still have uh, that centralized campus. Um, but other than that, um, you could afford to run the existing building for generations and never have to pay the amount of money just to renovate. Um, and and I, although it would expand the footprint, it wouldn't, ch it wouldn't change it uh, probably for the amount of money that you're spending. So. It's really a, a no-go for me. 
Yeah, yeah, did it for me. I gave it a 41, which was my lower score. It's just pretty much every sentiment. I don't support renovating that building in any way myself. Yeah, I actually did give it a 24 when I rated it. And as I mentioned before, I, I just would never support or vote um, for the renovation of that building. I think of the Falmouth High School renovation and a $20 million cost overrun in, in this 23 now, I guess, <laughs> and yeah. still counting. And yes, I just, are. I just, no way. I gave it a low score of 37. I cannot support it in any, any way. After we get all done, what do we have? An old school with a fancy inside. That's all we have. I can't see wasting the money. I, I didn't, I gave this option a zero. Not for the same reasons as everybody else. I, I probably will buck the trend on uh, I, I, one of the options I do feel is actually a viable option to reuse the school. I think it's a, probably one of the better bangs for a buck, but uh, option 1G, I, I, don't, I just didn't even bother to rate. Right. <coughs> do you want me to start in the next? <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, keep going. Keep going. Oh, I All think right. that's <laughs> option 2A, 725 at Bondi. Natasha. <laughs> also, did you have a score for 1A? I'll get it okay. as we go around okay. as well. At least by the end, up. we need to fill in. Sure, no problem. If anyone. Um, so this was the smallest Borndale, oh, I'm loud, the smallest Borndale option. Um, I actually got a score of 44. I think if um, the building is going to happen over there, I think that's a reasonable size. Um, as much as I do feel the fifth grade should be included with the rest of um, the other kids, I'm not sure that that um, high number of students is necessary for our town. So of the Borndale options, this scored the highest for me. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Okay. Uh, I, too, I gave it a 45 of the three Borndale options. It is the highest score that I awarded that site um, because as much as I love Borndale, that's a big school as it is now. And I think what goes on at Borndale is fantastic. And to me, that's the priority, what goes on in the building, not the building. But I think that has to be included when you think about what goes on in the building. So of the three Borndale options, that one is my favorite. Um, for me, the, of the Borndale options, this had the best score. I had this as a 44. Um, I do. I like the design of it. Um, I like the expansion of the gyms, but um, I do have a concern about the library, the learning commons area that we did discuss, and I, I too just have a, a big concern about going from 68,000 square feet to 114, um, and. So just the, si the size of the school and also the movement of kids and just the interruption to learning in terms of the renovating and how it, the project is actually going to be extended several months or a year time-wise just to build it. So it extends the time of disruptions to kids and I, I think that's a, a big concern. I also think it's um, $2 million to put it over there you know, to not get the credit for the raising of peoples is, if that's what ends up happening, that's a lot of money, I think. And I do have big traffic concerns coming, coming home because we're gonna be going with the traffic. So that's a big concern in terms of getting home, especially in the spring and uh, fall months, especially. But in terms of, um, you know, some of the creative ideas with the adjacent spaces, I think it's, I like a lot of this, but also of the Borndale options, it's my favorite. Okay. Yes, sorry. No, oh, no, I just didn't want to interrupt you. Um, I had a 65 for this one. Um, I don't know if, if it's living there in Borndale already, that my view is a little skewed. Um, I don't see this as such a huge undertaking or huge option. Um, 
I live on this side of the bridge, so I travel back and forth over the bridge at any given day. Um, and although there are nuisances and cranberry truck spills and everything else, um, <laughs> you know, it's it still works, and I think that's going to happen no matter what. Um, I don't see this as a too huge of a space for the kiddos. I like the way there is um, separation according to grade levels and kind of a cohesive group with grade levels, but I also like that there is um, more collaboration as far as having an entire grade together and being able to utilize resources and, and the kids being able to have that cohesiveness together. Um, I really love the, the entry area and the outdoor classroom being in that space and then the community spaces as well. Um, and I think a lot of that, I know some of the, the concerns that came up already are, you know, student distances and walking to those spaces. And a lot of that is creative scheduling. We do it now, you know, to make sure that if kids have phys ed, they're going to lunch right afterwards. And it, it cuts down on that travel time around the building and things such as that. So um, I really liked the, the layout and this option. Uh, this was my fourth highest option. I had a score of 47. This was my highest amongst the larger additions to the uh, schools for a couple of reasons. One is I thought that you really maximize a lot of the um, MSPA uh, uh, contingencies on room space, square footage. Uh, you actually complete a full, you actually get a full size gymnasium at Borndale Elementary School. I thought it did a lot around clustering of the grades. Um, and, you know, I understand the, the size of a building to us as adults, but kids only live in their own little world. Um, they only see their classroom. They don't see uh, that they're in a 100,000 square foot building. Um, so this was the highest. I think it does a lot um, if there is a consideration for this one, um, meaning highest for the largest, uh, for the large buildings. Um, I just think it, again, it adds additional space for cafeteria, for a gymnasium, for those community areas. Um, but it did receive a 47 for me, which is not is my fourth highest score. So, um, I gave this a 43, and I would really agree with most of what's been said. Um, I like the layout, and uh, I'm glad to hear Liz reinforce that the uh, the travel around the building won't be an issue. Um, it's larger than I'd like to see it and it doesn't do anything to alleviate the pressure of the fifth grade at the middle school um, and it removes our neighborhood school on this side of the canal I gave it a 43 which is the highest of those options of the uh, Borndale options um, <clears throat> I gave this one this was actually my top score uh, but it's also the top of the three uh, larger options, so I have a 57 for this one. Um, and I've heard some of the feedback about the size and the, the location and the traveling, um, but, you know, I try to step back a little bit and think, too, that um, when we're talking about th these uh, sizes, this might be the worst it ever is. Um, there's a trend in the Cape that everyone is just getting smaller. Families my age, they're not here, and they're leaving. And w there's schools that are going to be closing on the Outer Cape because they don't have enough families to, to keep them afloat. Um, so I think I, that, that sort of permeated my thoughts, is that maybe this is the worst it ever is, and it might only go smaller. Uh, chances are it will. So we may not be talking about a school that actually has that kind of population. And we may be better off being condensed because you may find out in, if MSBA is looking for a 50-year alternative, then in 50 years, two schools is just insane. Um, and maybe it will only be one school. So um, I, I, f for that reason, I think that uh, there's a lot of efficiencies there. Um, there's uh, an existing newer school that can be expanded and everything can be housed at one location. And I understand the bridge problem. Uh, we'll never get over the bridge problem. If you live on this side of the bridge, you still have a bridge problem if you're going over with middle and high school students. Or if you're on the other side of the bridge and you have a pre-K student, everyone's at Borndale. It's, 
you know, it's just ne we can't solve it. Everyone and eventually, after months or a year, it becomes routine and and it kind of goes away. So um, clearly, you know, there's there's sentiment to both sides of that. But um, as far as the neighborhood school, I mean, I, I'm starting to think maybe this is the neighborhood school down the road. Um, so that, those are just my thoughts and why I've read it at the highest. Okay. Yeah, I scored uh, 41. It's a lot of the same sentiment. I think if it, the school, if it does end up, you know, everybody wants to build on that side, you know, at the Borndale site, it's probably the best option. Cause it's, you know, it's like design of this building overall. I gave it a 50. Um, I, I think the biggest drawback is I don't think this town will ever vote to have one school um, and eliminate you know, uh, school on, on this side of the bridge. And, um, and I think, I just think it's critical um, that we think down the road, we got, the canal is an issue, the bridges are an issue. Um, we've had situations in the past here where one bridge was closed or um, for all practical purposes closed, which meant rerouting kids all over the place, trying to get them around. And I just think it gives us an option with, with two facilities um, this is the only town in, in Massachusetts, and it's one of the only in the country that has this unique situation. And, and I, I think the state um, should recognize that. It's, it's, it's a real, it's a major issue. Nobody else is dealing with this. Rich, could you repeat your score? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. I'm sorry? Did you 15. say 15 or 50? Oh, 50. 50. That was my, okay, that's um, what I, was like. I guess I ranked that number three out of okay. the four that I did. All right. I rated it a 55, the highest out of the three. I took it one step further. I included safety. We have Main Street Fire Station, Sagamore Fire Station, both of them equipped with ambulances. If a child gets sick, hurt, you got better coverage. Your roadways will be maintained better. The DPW's right next door. The police station on Main Street. And that's something we have to consider in this day and age, is things happen. we all seen it in the news. And for students to travel over the bridge, they're resilient. They'll get over it. Mm -hmm. And the same as we all did in this town. We went all the way to the base. So I can't see location being a factor. I like it. It's secluded down there. The kids don't, up at Campus 2000, they're watching all the kids outside playing at the other schools. Here they don't have that problem. I like the concept and that's why I gave it a 55. If I'm, if I might go on a little longer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just, in there? just to be just to be clear, yeah, I traveled over the bridge my whole my whole school career. Um, I probably had a 45 minute commute at one point to the base every every day on the bus, but uh, probably longer. But uh, so I, I, I in in all in actuality, this is probably my favorite option. Uh, I think there uh, the the operating costs I think are going to be lower. I think while we're still in the preliminary design stages. I think there's probably room to squeeze the electrical costs, the mechanical costs, and a lot of other costs, or the, the higher infrastructure costs that are associated with building a new building. I think the footprint uses the site very well. I think I agree with Jim's statements a lot, and I know Jim, Jim, Jim's an architect, I'm an engineer, I think we think probably different than, than most. I think this is a very efficient use of space on the site. I think the building is a building that the town could use, I, th I agree with Jim, I know, I know our volumes are decreasing, I know our population is actually decreasing. This might be the best long-term solution for the town. However, I gave it, I did, I did not rate, I gave it a zero for the simple fact that I don't think uh, we have enough armor to wear to go to town meeting <laughs> to, fight the, to fight the fight to put the building over here. I, I, I could stand up there and say all these things make great sense. And I, people always vote with their hearts. They vote with their emotions. And um, just from the, the few public presentations that we've seen, and, I, and I'm not criticizing, but from the few present, public presentations we've seen, those emotions have been very strong. Um, 
for having a having a school on the other side of the bridge. So I like I said, I, I think we're too early on to, to really rate it on a lot of these criteria, but uh, I, I, I didn't rate it, I gave it a zero. The, and not to interrupt you, John, the, the only thing that I'll say is that, and I think you had the other one with a zero, if you can, it would be good to put a number, only because for the record, I don't think we should score it based on if we stood up at a podium at town meeting and what the voters will think. I, I think that's part of how you can score it, but I don't think you should score it that way. And if you have some convictions about what's good and bad about these, I think you should put a number to it. And, uh, you know, the, the way it falls at town meeting will be that way, but, you know, to, to kind of put it out of sight and out of mind, just assume that it's a failure to begin with. I mean, renovating an existing building could be a, but let's not give it a zero, let's give it a number. And You're correct, I could go back and, re, and redo some of my scores. I mean, I, I tried to keep it to a three, two, one for, for the, I, I originally looked at this a different yeah. way and then I kind of came back and said, no, I think, I, you know, there is, I think there's an option that kind of stands out above, above the rest for, for both the overall, what we've heard at all the meetings. And that's, that's why I've kind of, I, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket, I guess, the way I, the way I did the voting on this, so. I can go back and reassess that, though. It would. I, I'd appreciate it. Um, I mean, there's there's people that aren't here tonight that, and I don't want to say shame on them, but shame on them, um, because this is important. And if you're here to vote, then don't give yourself a zero. You're here, so give it a number, and those are the ones that we'll look at, and you know, we'll put it through. <coughs> So let's move to option 3A. 3A. 885 students at Borndale. Okay. That's with fifth grade. Um, I gave this one a 38. This was tied with my lowest of um, the options at Borndale. Um, I have heard a lot of feedback from the community and I strongly believe that it's always good at this point in the game to have options and to not try to narrow down everything to what my own core convictions are because I think it's really important to be able to hear different ideas and to be able to see if there's a best way to blend things together. Um, I personally believe that this option is huge. I just cannot wrap my head around that many students, everyone in one spot. Um, I understand the projections, you know, that they certainly could go down, but who's to say that you just can't predict the future um, with everything that's going on in, in our society nowadays. So um, my score was 38. I do think it's a large school. I think it's, um, it's good to have all the kids in one location that's been brought up a few times, that everyone, every child gets to go through um, all of their grades together, and I think that's a positive, but again, the size could be a drawback as well. Um, so I think that's... Mary Jo? I gave option 3A. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> a 40. Um, I Honestly, I'd like to see what the design of this building would look like because I like that it's a little quirky. However, I'm not sure that's, we may might at some point be in the same situation we were at with the first design of Borndale. However, um, I know that this puts the fifth grade, helps the middle school by putting the fifth grade out of that building. Um, but I gave it a 40. Um, so for this option, um, my overall score was a 41. I just, just mentally, I'm just having a hard time getting over the sheer size of this building. When you look at it, it's right on the edge of the road, which it means it's only yards away from the DPW property. Um, again, for both, for the options, I, I think the positive things about being at Borndale is some of the things that Liz has said already about 
you know, uh, collaboration and that and that sort of thing. Those are um, definitely very positive. But um, I really would hate to see the loss of the resources that we use on the site now for peoples within nearby schools, in terms of the mentoring and the facilities with all the schools. Um, but the other thing, Jim, to your point about the numbers going down, that's already accounted for. So I, I don't want to, I guess I would just be cautious about predicting that the school's going to disappear. <laughs> so part of what the MSBA has already done is they've already done those reduction projections. So I just. Oh, think, right, because that's the 250 yeah, that's incorporated. So, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying beyond that, beyond yeah, that, this might be the yeah. worst case scenario. Right. I'm Okay. So I'm just, well, when you said there wouldn't be a need for two schools, I, I just would be. That I, I'm just not sure I could agree with that much of a reduction is what I'm saying, especially with, as you say, or as Dusty said, what is going on in the world. The, the unknown entity here is what is the future of the Air Force Base? And as the principal of Peebles, that's definitely the kids coming in and out is something that is always something that we have to be cognizant of. So if there's any kind of changes to that facility and the resources out there, that would definitely impact the school community in terms of the size. So that's just something I don't want us to lose sight of over time. So even if we did have a loss, it's not to say that we wouldn't have a different need for it right. to make it render it useless, so to speak. Um, so I, I just think it's important to, to remember that. And I also, I understand what Steve was saying about kids know their classroom. And you know there is a lot of truth in that, but they do spend a big chunk of their day in other parts of the building. So in, in that sense, you know, like I know at Peebles, it's a much, it's a smaller school, so the kids really are very familiar with all parts of the school, the library, the cafeteria, the gym, the recess area, and those are probably within a minute or two minutes of walking distance, so, and it's not to say that those areas at Bourndale would be further away, but um, I just think, you know, in terms of knowing the whole building, I think it, it wouldn't happen, and I think that would be a sad thing if they didn't. You know, that's part of the whole thing is it's your school. It's not just part, your part of your school that you identify with. Um, but in terms of, you know, all those other reasons that I, I've already stated, I, I just think this is an enormous building for an elementary school. I gave this option um, a 48. It was a little bit higher than the other one just because of the layout of the other building. Um, or the other 885 option. I go back and forth on the size. Um, I do think it's a very large building. I think a benefit of that is it does alleviate the fifth grade at the middle school. Um, when I listen to people talk about having a campus feel, um, I think this truly creates an elementary campus in the town, um, which is a very focused younger generation. The, you know, like I said, a very elementary focused type of campus. Um, when I look at this particular design as opposed to 3B, I see this as, again, an elementary campus that has an early childhood focus center and then a more of an intermediate center. So I almost, the, the part where I kind of back off on the size is when I think of it almost as two separate buildings with that learning commons and the community space in the middle. Um, which in my mind then kind of alleviates that hefty size, if you will, and the number of students. Um, and again, a lot of pros and cons that we keep going back and forth about with all the different options, so. Uh, this 3A, 3B scored the same for me, 45 for both of them. That was my second lowest score. Uh, initially, uh, well, to be honest with you, the, the only thing that this building really does is it creates that elementary campus collaboration students receive very uh, consistent learning, uh, teaching and learning because of the opportunities for collaboration. But after watching us go through this a little bit and taking a look at it, what we're in essence really doing is building an elementary school next to an elementary school. And I just think that the cost of doing that just isn't going to work um, and is not marketable uh, at the community level uh, to, to, to build two elementary schools in essence next door to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, there are some things that are enticing about it, obviously, again, educationally, it's, it's good, but as far as maximizing the MSBA re reimbursement, as far as utilities and things of that nature, 
Um, I just don't see it really uh, being you know, bearing out to be the uh, the, the best option uh, for uh, an addition on that side of the bridge. Um, <coughs> those are great points that have been made, especially by the two elementary principals <laughs> who live, live in this every day. Yes. Uh, I, I, there are advantages to it, but I just cannot get beyond the, the, just the size and the number of kids in the building. Um, the, 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 it's laid out in an advantageous way. I like the way the, the fifth grade is, is integrated into the building. But again, it's just too big. It, it fills up that site like leaves absolutely almost no green space and uh, I gave it a 40. Okay, well, um, this one for me, I gave a 54. Um, there's several options. They're all within a, like a point or two of each other uh, because I think there's a lot of advantages to a lot of the designs. Uh, in this one, uh, I think s some of the advantages is there's that elementary campus uh, and you're actually helping out the middle school uh, because you're taking fifth grade, you're moving it over here. Um, and I still think that, you know, this came up with the community discussion is we haven't explored and, and it's not our task to, but if for some reason we went with an option uh, where it, everything was at Borndale, we can't assume that Peebles is a liability. Um, in there, there could be money to be made with Peebles also. And so that can help offset, and I, I can't say that that's for sure, but, um, and again, it's not our task, but I don't think we should always look at it as a demo <coughs> project. It doesn't have to be a demo project. It doesn't have to be a liability. Um, so the, um, 885 is a big number. Uh, the, the good news about the 885 is it, it, you're taking on the fifth grade, you're helping <coughs> alleviate the middle school, um, and you're sort of reinventing, I guess, elementary education in Bourne. So there's, there's a lot going yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. There definitely is. Um, but those are um, my takes on that one. Okay, I gave this one my lowest score, which is a 40. I just consensus most every else. I think it's just I never heard of an elementary school that large before, so I think it's just personally too large of a school. I gave both of these options, three A and three B, a score of forty three, um, and really I don't have anything new to add. I, I don't think it's viable. I don't think the community would ever support it and I, I hate to see us waste the time and resources to go through all this and everybody's time here and and uh, the financial impact, and I just don't think it's, I, I don't think it's viable. So for me, they rank like fourth and fifth. I ranked it at a 44. I just feel it's too big. I'm afraid the kids will be lost. <laughs> We won't lose them. We, we won't lose them. <laughs> it may promise. take us a while. <laughs> <to> <laughs> it may take us a while to find <laughs> them. <laughs> them. They're going to put And that's how I them. feel <laughs> about it. Yeah. Is uh, <laughs> same as a lot of people. It's just too big. Yeah. Yeah. I pretty much. I, I, I had this as my new scoring is 32. So <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, this is my lowest. Sure. The next two are my lowest. Peer so pressure. 31, 32, and 31. <laughs> So let's, uh, well, option 3B, we stay with the 885 at Borndale, and it's a uh, different configure. It still has fifth grade, just a different uh, design configuration to the addition. More linear. Go back to you. <laughs> out in front of the building. So I gave this one the same score I gave the last one. It's a 38. Um, again, the size, I can't get over. I'm not a fan of the layout of this. I think it's like a big giant box. I do prefer the other layout better, um, but I just, I don't like the size. I gave this a score of 40 for the reasons that I mentioned in 3A. Um, I gave this a score of 44. Um, just not, nothing really new to add except for um, the fifth, having the fifth grade there is, is, a, is a good option. So, Elizabeth? I, uh, this was my second lowest score at 41. 
Um, I think this perpetuates um, the concern people have because it's just a parallel addition, if you will. That does create a problem with travel back and forth because it doesn't <laughs> help keep kids kind of in that centralized location where specials are as far as the gym or the cafeteria, things like that, and kids at that far end of the building, there would be a lot of travel time with this layout involved. And I, I really just, there's nothing aesthetically pleasing about spending that much money to put that on the front of the building. This one was the same score as 3A, 45, and for the same reasons that I gave for 3A, I would submit for 3B, if you recall those. <laughs> Watch it on TV. <laughs> Uh, yeah, everything that, that I said about 3A goes for 3B, too big, and it's the same score, 40. Uh, for this one, uh, I have a 56. Like I said, I had a bunch in, in uh, within a point or two of each other. It is quite large. Uh, I, I'm not sure that, uh, and I think uh, Steve pointed out correctly, it's really uh, an elementary school attached to another elementary school. Although I will say that uh, the, with the linear configuration, the site works a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's kind of nice about it. Um, but it's, it's, it's probably um, you know, a, a big undertaking to, to, to pull this off. And uh, there is a lot of uh, um, disturbing the existing building that you would have to do to kind of pull off this addition, so um, that's about all I have for this one. Okay, uh, just I also gave it a low one of my lowest scores of 42 for the same reasons, just about the size of the school. As, as I mentioned, I gave it a score of 43, and I guess everybody's already made the comments that need to be made about that. I gave a score of 44 on this one also, same thing, just too big. I just scored 31. This one was my lowest. So. All right. can, can, can I just ask a question? So for all of the auctions at Borndale, is the, is the construction schedule around the same time frame? Like does one, is one auction shorter than the other in terms of if it were to be over there in terms of a disruption to kids? Is one less time than the other in building? It's just a magnitude of scale of the project. This this has slightly larger footprint, so there's a few months tacked on to it. But there's other relationships that, you know, the phasing is relatively minimal in the existing building. But, um, you know. The option threes are a few months longer than Yeah, it just made mainly the scope. Say that again, John. Option three, the two option threes are, two are a few three. months longer than the option two. Just because they're, they're, they're bigger. bigger. Just bigger, just bigger and there's more yeah. interface between all right, I didn't know. The that items, yeah. Where they were being attached. Okay. Okay, so now we're moving on to option four, which is uh, back at Peebles <coughs> and adding fifth grade and 410 students with a new school. Um, this was actually my favorite. Um, I gave it a 57. I think it accomplished a lot of the goals that I had in my mind when I first started becoming involved with this as far as trying to make everybody happy as much as you can with limitations. Um, I think this satisfies keeping the community school on, on that side of the bridge. Um, it allows for continuing collaboration with the high school students, which I think is great. My kids are still talking about their um, experiences in Innovation Studio. Um, I think it's awesome that they can take advantage of that. It's right there. Um, I do really think that um, the fifth grade belongs in the elementary school, and I think this allows for that to happen. Um, I've heard that there could be some um, concern with bringing the Borndale kids over only for fifth grade for one year in this school and then bringing them to the middle school. Um, but then uh, the argument is right now, you know, you, people who live on the Cape side of the bridge have to bring their kindergartners over to Borndale and then back to Peebles and then to the middle school. So there's a lot of shuffling. It's very hard to eliminate that without having that big giant school we've already discussed. Um, so personally, I do think that this is a nice option. It's a new school. It doesn't require a lot of interaction with the students um, as the building is going on. So I don't think there's a lot of disruption there. Um, and I love where it's located on the campus.
Okay, Mary Jo. This, this too was my highest score of 61. Um, I like this. I like it that it's not going to renovate Peebles. I like that it, or I think I should back up. I think no matter what happens to any of these options, there is a disruption to students just because if there are construction vehicles on a site and there are kids in a building and windows, there's a little bit of disruption. But this seems to be the least disruption to the um, staff and students. I think this is a perfect size school. I think it gets the fifth grade out of the middle school, which is something I think we always wanted. However, any school we've ever built in this town was open, crowded. So let's hope this isn't, that. this is the first that isn't. And this is my favorite. Um, this is, of all the options, this is absolutely my favorite because of the new tennis courts. No, kidding. <laughs> first things first. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Priorities. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Um, so I mean, I mean, the building design is is amazing, and the, the community access and cutting off from the academic wings is amazing. The location on the site is, um, but I, I would have to say, um, you know, the thing that really swayed me about this is the fifth grade part of this building. Haven't taught at the middle school since it opened for 15 years, and haven't been a health teacher um, teaching grades five to eight. The, range of topics is huge <laughs> from fifth to eight and so when I think about fifth grade being back at the elementary where they're supposed to be and those kids being leaders I think is amazing and I think um, for me having the fifth grade on on this on the people side of the bridge if we're going to take the fifth grade out makes the most sense because we are so close to the middle school um, the things that we could do, even though the Borndale kids would be with us for a year, the things that we could do with the fifth grade in that year, and then the, the partnerships that we could form with the middle school ahead of time so that those kids would be familiar with the middle school before they even got there. It would help so much with the transition, having those kids on that campus familiar with the facilities and the resources in that area already so that it reduces the, um, reduces the impact of the transition for the Borndale kids. So I gave that score 65. I'm done, Elizabeth. Okay. I'm just checking, <laughs> just checking. Um, this one tied for my top score at a 65. It actually tied with option 2A for me. Um, I do love this option the best for the, the various people's options. Um, I don't think it's too small. I think it's a little bit more cohesive as far as the grades are concerned. Um, I've, I've said with any of the options, the kids are resilient. I, I didn't love it at first that the fifth grade was going to be heading over for a year. Um, and once I got the adult brain out of my way and um, thought about it through the kids' eyes, they have to transition at some point together. So why not transition in a smaller, more you know comfortable elementary setting and then go off altogether? So that's, I don't see that anymore as a drawback. Um, and I, I love the way this building looks on the people site as well. So this was one of my top options. This was my highest uh, score. This was 58 um, because I think it really checks all the boxes when you really look at it, um, and especially what we've been hearing at the community forums. Uh, we've been discussing with our own uh, personnel within the district um, and the needs of our students. What it really does is, uh, for me, is it, it's that fifth grade that's really a, a key component for me. <clears throat> Believe it or not, there is a precipitous drop in student achievement whenever you transition them from one facility to the next. What this allows us to do is really stage that <clears throat> so that we can try to mitigate or alleviate some of that precipitous drop uh, because one of the huge components of all that is the social aspect of it. Uh, and when you put fifth graders in with eighth graders and expect them to be socially uh, competitive with eighth grade students, we, we really run a lot of risks um, and, and um, it doesn't 
it's typically work for, for most, the majority of kids. It works for some because some fifth graders are, are already acting like eighth graders. But, um, <laughs> um, but I just think this really stages the learning better for students going from elementary to middle school. And it doesn't take away uh, all of the opportunities that uh, you know some uh, children will have on this side of the bridge, on that side of the bridge, with access to the middle school and the high school. Um, and again, I just think uh, listening to everything that's being said, this really checks a lot of boxes for me. So this was my highest one. Also, my favorite. Um, I think that probably the two things that pushed it over for me were the response at the community forums. Um, everybody clearly liked this option the best, and, um, and the other thing is the, is the fifth grade. Um, Barnstable, for years, had a dedicated fifth grade building, and, and that actually worked out really well because fifth graders arrive as babies and leave as adults, and uh, it's a very, very transitional year, as we all know. And, um, I, I, and for that reason, I don't see putting ki having kids move for one year, I don't see that as a big deal at all. And uh, I love the, the, the campus resources available. And uh, so for that reason, that is why I rated it a 54, which is my highest. I rated this option very well, uh, 55. I thought that it's, uh, it's great to get the fifth grade back in elementary school. Uh, you know, again, with this site, a new building, uh, it's not enormous, um, and, it, and it does meet a lot of uh, criteria of uh, what people are looking for with their elementary school. Um, so this one was rated high by me. Okay, this is also my highest rated. I gave it a 54. I think it makes more sense to build a bigger building if you're going to, you know, on the, on the south side of the, of the bridge. It gives more options. If some point the elementary expanded. You could put the fifth grade, I guess, back in the middle school. That was an option. Mm -hmm. And I like that idea. But yeah, it gives more flexibility having a larger building than building a smaller building. I think it makes most sense to have the campus setting, the rail set, have the resources of the other schools, and everybody be right there. I think it's the best option. This was my best option as well. I scored it at a 56 uh, pretty much for all the reasons everybody's mentioned. I, I, I think this is the way to go. I, I li really like the way this <coughs> site is used, and um, I, it just seems this seems to me to to be just ideal. Leave it at that. I also gave it a high score of 53. I like the school, the layout, and where it is. Everybody else has pretty much agreed with it. <laughs> this is my highest rated 159. Um, I'll go back and just say that. Uh, my option 1G and 2A were 40 and 42 respectively um, when I totaled up those those scores. But uh, 59, this was a 59. I felt it was a uh, probably the best uh, alternative that we're looking at when you look at across uh, <coughs> not only all the items that are on the sheet, but some of the, the intangibles that aren't on here, plus uh, I think the cost that they started to outlay in the back. So this was very close with option 4B with me. So. <laughs> Okay. So our last one is 4B, and that's fifth grade, and it's just a renovated Peebles expanded footprint. Um, I rated this one a 41, which is one of my lower ones. Um, I do really strongly believe the fifth grade should be incorporated. We've already said this a million times. Um, I don't think that renovating the existing building as much as it would be great to do that for um, emotional purposes for some people, I don't think it would be a smart use of the town's money. I don't think it's very efficient. Natasha, were you able to sum up your 1A? Yes, that was A39. building a score of 49. I, I like the design of the building. I wish it didn't incorporate renovating Peebles. Um, and with the other plan, I think the delineation of the fifth grade as, I, I like
like that design a little bit better than the way it was designed here. Um, I gave this a score of 40, um, 46. I, I don't, I just don't uh, support any renovating of tables. It's just not, it's just not worth it. I know some people have high hopes for its future use, but um, I, I, I just don't see it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. <laughs> And only because I practically live there. So. <laughs> um, I gave this one a 54. It was one of my lower ones, but um, I don't see this one. I don't like the renovation at all. I just think that's a, a really poor use of money. But I also don't think this design lends itself to as many creative spaces as um, the Option 4A does. It's kind of boxy and just very set up as far as classroom spaces and everything else, whereas I think the other one lends itself to some more creative and flexible learning spaces that people have really been talking about adding into the school. And my first one was 48. I gave this one my third highest score, which was a 48. Um, as a principal of a school that was renovated, completely renovated, and I came in at the very end of the construction project and enjoyed um, going into a renovated school, um, I really like the aesthetics of an old building um, and um, one of the things was a real good connection to the community that they really were able to speak to you know what the facility looked like what they remember looking like and then the modernization of it um, there's just there is an emotional connection as we talked about whether it's at town meeting whether it's just somebody walking off the street who wants to come in and take a look at what people's becomes um, I, I think that the biggest concern I have now let me be clear this is my third highest, but it received the most number of twos. Uh, I only had two threes in the entire rating of this. Uh, but one of the things that's extremely concerning to me is with the renovation project is that you have large gathering spaces that are still above and below, um, you know, instructional areas. Uh, so, for example, to this point, the cafeteria is above other classrooms, and we know what it's like to have the gymnasium above the cafeteria. You know, those things aren't really um, optimal to me. Uh, living within a budget, I understand, but there's still that old soul in me that likes some type of connection to, uh, you know, the history of the community. It's, I believe the community invests in something like that as well. So um, it didn't receive my highest score uh, by 10 points, uh, but it was my third highest score for those reasons. Some of the things I like about 4A, I also like about 4B, the fact that it's in the campus environment and does alleviate the pressure at the middle school for the fifth grade, um, but w I, I just cannot support a renovation of Peebles in, in any way. And uh, even though I have some high scores for 4B, uh, the net comes out at 43. So not my favorite. Uh, for me, th this one was tied for the lowest at 42. Uh, you know, there's there's plenty of discussion tonight about renovating Peebles, and I I tend to agree with Steve. I think that there's a lot of buildings that could be renovated and done quite nicely. The question is in Bourne, if Peebles is one of those buildings, mm -hmm. and that's what I don't know. I think it's fair to say is this a you know a classic car that we're looking at that we want to restore, or is it not? And so that's where we have to decide if it's worth putting the money into. Um, and I guess that's what the community would decide. I would, I would suggest that's probably probably not. But um, so that's why I've rated it rated it low, considering the the cost and then what we're left with at the end. I, I rated it with a score of uh, 47 because I as I said earlier, I don't really see much sense in renovating. Peebles, if you look at the cost estimates, the cost of the new school and renovating to get the, both 410 students is a, you know, the difference is like $100,000. So it wouldn't seem to make much sense to renovate, to attempt to renovate that school. We can build a brand new school, the same number of students, the same cost. I rated this one the same as I did 1G, which was a 24. I just think it's a non-starter. I'm going to go back to the car reference. It may be a classic car, but it's got a rotted frame. And <laughs> to put any money into it is just, um, is, I just, I just would never vote for it, and I would never ask the community to support it. 
I also gave it a low score of 44, and I do not think, like Rick just said, made reference to a frame. I've walked that school four or five times. I see a lot of structural issues, and uh, I can't support it. My, uh, I had a rating of uh, 52 on this. It was my second highest. I think it's probably the best use of site that we've seen on all, on all the drawings. I really feel that the circulation on the site, the uh, efficiency of the site really, really works well for, for a school. Um, I think it probably provides less uh, um, disruption during, during building than some of the other renovation addition options. Um, I've been involved with uh, renovations to old buildings. I've seen various, some very successful buildings or they're uh, renovated that, that were older that people probably didn't think had much life left in them. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think as we move down the process further, we probably could fine tune some of those numbers in the back. There might be more of a cost savings, but I mean, I really think that this, because you, you can kind of picture it if you just drive up to the site, you can kind of picture how this would flow and work on the site, I think it, I think it would be a great, great option, but. All right. So, can I ask a question, Jim? Yeah. Um, just overall, I, I know what we, we spent to, to build Bondale, and I know that was that it, we were extremely lucky because of the favor that everybody was out of work and they we got to like 25 bids but these prices just seem over the moon I, I, I yeah I, I, just, I, think I just had that concerns about the cost well and that's something that we need to work with with Joel and Kent on and, and that in in fairness what they have is you know there's a lot of backup documentation that they have to that but again, where I was saying with the juggling, I don't think that it has to land there. But we can't value engineer something that really doesn't right, even no, have a footprint yet. That's 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 close. So uh, it it's a difficult situation, but it's the it's the way that we have to go about this. Right, um, I get it. The process wise, and then as far as the numbers, sure. I mean, who wouldn't want to see lower numbers? So. If we can do that, then then we will explore that. And we can also provide uh, the, the recent projects that have been approved yeah. by the board. Yeah. Um, they, they track everything. I'm sure you will. So I, I was making a tally of of the various options and how we how we voted, and just looked at um, the top three. Um, from each of us, and how many times um, a various, a, a particular option landed in the top three of our, of our votes. Um, option 4A landed in the top three 11 times. Option 4B landed in the top three eight and a half times, and it landed in eight and a half times um, because we had uh, two equal scores uh, given for as our as our third highest option. In, in, in other words, let me explain. So um, Bill had 44 for option 3B and option 4B, which was your third highest. So I just give you a half point. Give it a half I got point you. just for rounding and talking purposes. So 4A was uh, in top three 11 times, 4B eight and a half times, um, 2A six times, 1A six times. 1G was in the top three once, 3A was uh, not in anybody's top three, and 3B was in one and a half times. Is that, is that surprising, um, those results? Or is that mm -hmm. how it, as our conversation unfolded, what, where we were thinking it was going? 
Well, I'm a li I'm a little surprised on the 4B, four B, yeah, me too. Yeah. but I will say that don't even if we picked three, don't we? We'll always carry the cost to a renovation to Peebles anyhow. So the question would be: Are we carrying the cost to a a small renovation to Peebles or the 410 renovation? Right. Uh, in yeah, I, I think we shouldn't decide just on the ranking. I mean, this is telling us right. generally just how we independently came across our evaluations. Um, we we need to carry at least three into the, the PSR phase. Um, communities tend to go three or four when there's a lot of different grade configurations mm -hmm. um, in, involved. You have to have one of those as a renovation addition type option um, as a matter of, of comparison. So one G you don't have to have one as or a Peebles or one as a Borndale, it's just one as a I yeah. But so but would one G or four B have to carry on? Is that what you're suggesting? One or the other. If you in, in, in some respects, just carrying on with a 2A provides for your renovation and additional okay. option. Okay. But if you want to make sure you're really comparing uh, Peebles 410 Reno versus a Peebles 410 New, then I would say carry both of those. But I so thought we also discussed that if someone at uh, a meeting or a town meeting said, well, what a, did you look at renovating Peebles? Wouldn't you feel like you had to have carried one of the Peebles options to, to show well, that's that? Well, that's our that's choice. Our, that yeah, that's our choice. That you did? Well, okay. Well, I'm just throwing that out there then. I think 4A and 2A is an automatic forward, move forward. 2A, against I think 2A and 4A are automatic move forwards yeah. mm -hmm. as we go down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. finding the third one. Is that a motion? I make a motion that we move uh, uh, option 4A and option 2A in that order. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Forward into the PSP uh, phase of the project. Just those two? No, just well, just to, to just to get the, to yeah, just to, to start. To, just to move them out of the way. Right. Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, or a discussion? Mm. Discussion. Could you tell me what the totals of each option were? I just, um, I, I know. You mean money? You mean no, I'm no, not. We did, no, no, we no. did an average, we did, just did an average okay. of everybody, and, and 1A was 48, 1G is 34, 2A is 48, 3A is 42, 3B is 42. 4A, 57. <laughs> so that's 58? 58. 58. 58. Oh. And 4B is 45. So. I, I, again, I I'm all, my motion is only just to move two so that those two are solidified, mm -hmm. and then we can discuss what the third or possibly a fourth option would be. Uh, but I just, in, 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 instead of uh, deliberating uh, the third one around two that I think are pretty consistent for us as a group, yeah. I would just like to move those two forward. I'll second that motion. Okay. Is there any discussion that the... Uh, we already have a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Natasha seconded. Any more further discussion? Anyone does not want to see those two, any one of those two go forward? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Unanimous for 2A and 4A to move forward. Okay, if I could speak. I really like the fact that Joel said that 2A counts as a renovation project <coughs> as well. Uh, that's helpful in the discussion. Um, although I still think 4B should be priced out in some way, but that's just my uh, preference. Again, I've seen 
mm. renovated facilities, you know, at, at a cost savings if done well, done right, and all the homework is done prior to. Um, but I, I just think that 1A is just too small. I just think we're going down a rabbit hole with, with 1A. So, but I do like the fact that the 725 2A counts as a renovation project moving forward with MSBA. So. Motion out of that conversation. <laughs> so we, will, we will need to add one more. Yes. Yeah. 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 Letting someone else do that. Okay. <laughs> you need to add one more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think that uh, 4B is probably that one. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I'm actually surprised that 1A yes. scored over 4B. I'm, I'm surprised by that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was just from our scoring, that being the first out of the gates. Mm -hmm. Um, possibly getting mm -hmm. you know different numbers but per the conversation and the pros and cons people are talking about mm -hmm. I would have said 4b clearly would have scored higher than 1a so it was yeah. interesting to see those numbers and yeah. I think of the remaining options that 4b is the best one to go with I would put yeah. that in the form of a motion, motion. Okay. Sure. To, to, to forward uh, 4b Um, discussion, uh, well, I, I, I just had a couple things on that. Um, we have the 410 for a new school for Peebles, which moves the fifth grade. We have the 725 at Borndale, um, doesn't impact fifth grade. 4B moves the fifth grade to Peebles, just a renovation of Peebles. I'd like to see, although I don't think it's the bang for the buck, it probably would be good to see the smaller school move forward too because there will be questions about that. In other words, we're not showing an alternative for not moving the fifth grade. So we sort of make have to make a policy decision in a way that we're moving fifth grade or we're still allowing fifth grade to be at the middle school and moving an option forward where, you know, it doesn't move. Well, option 2A does not move fifth grade at all. No, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't move fifth grade, but then it becomes the only option. The consensus I'm hearing is 250 is small out of the gate, and we will be overcrowded in every way. Just to, It'll be nice, shiny, new, but... We'll be backing up a trailer. Yeah, it looks like we. Well, the only we reason if we put that forward, it looks like we haven't done, done that. <laughs> yeah, John. I, I'm, I'm actually, I, I'm supporting Jim on this because I think, I think what he's looking at is, 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 we're not. This next phase is still, is still a, the research phase, right? Sure. Right. Like we're, yep. still, we're still trying to pick. At the end of we're still the looking at all the best phases. We'll and I think what he's saying is that, if we. If we're basically, we don't, we don't want to option two A just to be completely off the table right off the bat because it's, it doesn't talk about the fifth grade and it's on the other side of the bridge. I think he's looking for two options that don't touch touch fifth grade that stay on both sides, that are both evaluating that option that, that the no fifth grade. Option. If we put a fourth option through, what does that mean? Increase it, cost and feasibility. No. Increase cost and P P. PSP? No. Increased cost, period? No. <laughs> no. Increased paperwork. Increased paperwork. That's okay. Another only, tree only bites the dust. Was... Sorry, Dusty, go ahead. Uh, one quick question. On this 250, do we still get as much reimbursement for a 250 school? The percentages would be the same across. Whether it was two fifty, seven hundred, eight hundred. No, no, for the new, for the okay. renovations additions, you would add the additional reimbursement for that proportion of renovation. But that that's in the next phase. So, the uh, at the PSR phase, we will work with MSBA to calculate what the reimbursement, the general reimbursement is for each of the of the options you carry forward on, in order for you to select the 
preferred option. Right. So should we move forward like a 1A and a, and a 4B to satisfy oh. that? I mean, that's four. I, don't, I guess my concern would be, Jim, I understand what you're saying, but it, to me it just looks like that we didn't do our homework if we put it forward. Like, it's clearly a lot of money for minimal number of students. Well, it is the cheapest money. And I don't want the argument that why did we move ahead the more costly projects and we didn't keep yeah, the cheapest one on the table. That's a different point. It's yeah. the cheapest it's in the best option, option, but it doesn't really. I it's and a, I think the, the town the, should decide that. I don't want to decide line, that for them. I don't want to take off the the cheapest option for them. You should take off the cheapest option after only being at this for three months, right? Yeah. I mean, we're. We're really not far enough down the road. I, I know I know people have certain feelings about it, but okay. If I could just look at the math differently, <laughs> if you take the cost per student, oh, I know. it's actually the most expensive. It, That's I'm my curious. point. I That's think that we should take yes. it off for that reason. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, to, we understand that, but the bottom dollar is is what is seen. Yeah, it, 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 nobody's doing that equation. Or, or most people don't do that equation. They they look at what the increase to their taxes would be as well as the cost of the project. I think that we should move 1A and 4B forward. I know it adds another uh, set of paper circumstances, but I, I think that there's some merit to that. Do we want to do the vote on the, four, <clears throat> the current motion and then reintroduce another motion, or is that a friendly amendment to the motion? I would accept the friendly <laughs> amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Who seconded it? They have to accept the two. Okay. Oh. Second the friendly second. Yes. I don't really see any downside to it. Uh, I, I would have a tough time have asking the community to support something that we don't, but uh, if, it, if it's an option that we need to have there for whatever reason, I'm okay with it. I don't think 1A makes a lot of sense for the community. But in the public setting, you know, when we're talking about dollars, I don't think we should ignore the cheapest option. No, I think you're right. You know, I think it needs to move forward. So let the public vet that and say, we agree with you. We, we think that that's a waste of our money. But if that was still the cheapest option, I think that that needs to still be on the table. Hasn't, hasn't the, the town, um, by the formation of this committee, though, placed a responsibility of making sure that whatever we do is what's needed by the school system and so by putting forward an option that doesn't address the needs of the school system I, I think we're uh, I, I don't think we're doing a service to the community I, I don't think we're doing our job because um, well it doesn't meet any of really any of our criteria it's too small it doesn't get the fifth grade out um, and it's and it's too expensive for what you get out of it it just doesn't make any sense to me uh, well, you're talking about 1A. Yeah. yeah. But if, if we look at it the other direction, we just need to have three or four, and it could be three, uh, ideas for the spring that we eventually will come down to one. So if you don't like, but, but if you don't like 1A, do you like any of those other options over 1A, not 4B? That you would substitute to move forward to the town. I well, can't. I guess that I can't see wasting our efforts or anything else when the cost factor per square foot is higher. What are you getting for your dollar? Do you buy a Volkswagen when you can have a Lincoln for the same money? No. So what I'm suggesting is if if one A doesn't meet if you if you don't think one A meets what the school needs, and you don't think the community would support it. Would you put 3A or 3B in its place right now to move forward? No. I th that's, that's the real question. I mean, Why? So you want your four options. I think four, I think four, it makes sense. And I think three, having a, a non-fifth grade and a fifth grade makes sense. And a lowest amount. I mean, these are just my comments. Anyone can chime in. So, so right now there's a motion to include 1A and 4B. Should we 
make the make a vote or should modify that motion? Uh, I'm not quite sure how we're. I think he, I think the superintendent probably should pull his. Why don't we just vote the? Why don't we vote four B and then we can vote the one A? Is it? It's up to you guys. I mean, I I. I I, I strongly feel that we should include that option in, in this. It's almost like the do-nothing study. We all kind of know it's not might not be the preferred alternative right now, but we're really not that far into this study yet. The, the next phase is really the meat, the, the, the meat and potatoes phase, where you're going to come to this. You're, we're all going to come down and say, okay, this is our best. This is our best option. And I, you know, I agree with Jim that you're not looking at. I don't think we're looking at all the student options that we originally started with MSBA fairly without without considering that. I just I, I, I think it makes it hard. Um, I, I think it's okay for us to struggle with this one. Mm -hmm. I think I think our, our, um, a good process would be for us to remove the friendly amendment, vote on 4B, as John was saying, and then take a vote on 1A. And if 1A is a mixed vote, it's a good message. It's a good form of record. But I agree, at this point in time, it's too early for us to say, we, I mean, we're, we're gonna have our other opportunities to take it out and remove it. Um, it'll be a good comparable, a good baseline. We can all sit here and agree that it's the cost. It, it, we're only looking at the, the low overall cost. Uh, we're not looking at the details behind that. And the next phase will help us with the details behind that to have a better argument to say, it's the most expensive building option out there for what we get out of it. So I would draw my friendly um, amendment. <laughs> I also think that moving forward, a lot of our focus is how the town is going to vote on this and, and putting forward options that we really think the town is going to buy into. And as much as I think all of us don't like any of option ones, I think it provides the focus to show the town that even though we have these low costs, it's not something that they're going to want to either but it allows them to see why we've moved on to those other options and, and almost puts them more in the category of being in a, a more beneficial spot of voting for one of those options as opposed to not having that there as a com uh, comparable, if that makes sense. And I think also when you see 1A and you understand where 1A comes from, exactly what you said, the numbers, the students, it drives cost. you to either 2A or 4A immediately because you see the benefits to either of those options. Right. I mean, I, I said before B and 4A, I'm almost treating the same, but it really drives you to the other options because you can see the genesis of where, you know, might be the, the lowest amount, but you really don't want to be there. So you want to be somewhere else. And, but at least it carries it. I think to vote on those two options uh, separately is a good idea because I would I would hate to see us group 1A with 4B and have it get a bunch of negative votes based on the 4B part and fail. So I, I would like to go back to the original motion <laughs> <laughs> in a very friendly way yeah, <laughs> uh, to move 4B forward and, uh, and leave 1A out of this conversation for the moment. And that's my motion. Is there a second? <laughs> just 4B. We're just voting on moving 4B and adding that to yeah. 2A and 4A. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Stain? Okay. One opposed? No abstentions? I make a motion that we move 1A as a fourth option. Entering into the PSP, knowing that we're adding work on to plans for architects. But they're gracious enough to handle it. That was to move 1A forward as a fourth option. Okay. Is there a second? No second? Second for the sake of discussion. Okay, discussion. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. No. Discussion of the. I just think it. I just think it provides a baseline. Oh, I think it provides a baseline for what a new construction for the existing grade configuration of Peebles is moving forward, and it will. Uh, I'm confident that it will be ejected or rejected at one point in time down the road. I just think 
I think we, we, we are doing a disservice if we don't look at what we currently have great configuration wise and what that would look like moving into a brand new building. I think that's a valid point. I do have some concern that, especially in this town, given everything that everyone has been through recently, they're going to focus on the price. And that's going to, everything else is going to be canceled out because at the end of the day, we can't afford this. And I think that is a valid concern. I think it makes a lot of sense to have it to compare. I think you also have to understand that there is always a chance that that, that cost could override everything. Um, and that's why it goes back to the point you had made that, that that's the reason why this committee was created and that's something that I personally take pride in being here is having a voice to bring it back to it's not always about the bottom line that's a huge part of it but that's not what it's all about so. in bringing this forward we're going to hear more we're going to be able to present more and hear more at our community forums mm -hmm. as to what this right. and see if the community really gravitates yes. towards this and we'll have an opportunity to present the actual facts around it as to whether it is uh, the, the best project moving forward mm -hmm. so do we, do we have a motion and a second mm -hmm. yeah yeah even though I, I cannot support this particular uh, building configuration for the purpose of future conversation, I will reluctantly support the motion. <laughs> well, and, you know, just to kind of wrap it up is, is that I think that the money side of this doesn't work for the students and the size of the school. But if you don't carry it forward, I don't think you have an apples to apples to peebles anymore. Because you've made a policy decision. If you only carry the 410 option, you've made a policy decision that you're incorporating fifth grade and you no longer have an apples of uh, you know, K through four uh, to K through four. You don't have it anymore. If you don't move that option forward, it, the money doesn't make sense, but the comparison is, I think, what you need. Otherwise, uh, you just have a K through five, and and you're not comparing to what Peebles was or is. That's we just we don't want to create a conflicting argument moving forward that we never looked at a comparable to our grade configuration. And it's not us. It's not up to us to to set policy on the right. grade configuration. Right. That's the school committee's job, and I assume they've done it. And uh, Oh, they're, they're interested in this whole project, yeah. Well, and what, it looks what, like. what would be, they in, in, terms, they in terms of great configuration, they, they're when we were on the school committee, we mm -hmm. voted a 6-8 middle school and mm -hmm. built a building around that. Um, is, is there a, a voted configure, great configuration? It, it's a different process now, so they're allowing the building committee to move forward with what they think is best at this okay. point in time. Okay. And they do have, believe it or not, representation on this committee. I know that they're not here this evening, but they do have representation on this committee. <laughs> Okay, well, we have, a, we have a motion, we have a second, and so uh, all those in favor of moving option 1A as a fourth option? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. Unopposed, any more? Abstain? Okay. Well, this right. is good work. Excellent work. Thank you, that was. We, we do have one um, yeah. more vote to do relative to the PDP submission, and that is a uh, vote to authorize the submission of the PDP sub submission to MSBA. Uh, and that uh, <laughs> would be a summation of all of the documents that um, Betsy and Kent have, have provided and re reviewed with us, a summation of the designs, summation of the costs, certainly a summation of the votes. Um, Delineating those four options to carry forward into the PSI. Shouldn't we so read it into the record tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wish? No. I don't. Can we see the binder? We haven't we seen the binder yet. <laughs> Show the binder for the camera. <laughs> uh, all right. Look at all that work that was done. Yep, there you go. And um, you'll receive your copy shortly. <laughs> Imagine what that'll look like at the end of this process, <laughs> but I would uh, move to approve uh, and submit to MSBA the PDP as it exists, uh, as Plansburg has provided us with the documentation and so forth. Um, so I would move that we submit. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Excellent. No discussion on that one. <laughs> so there is a. Uh, there is a. Uh, yeah, I know. There is a document uh, that MSBA um, is, is needing to be signed uh, right out of their regulations. I worked with uh, Tom, um, town administrator, to put it on town letterhead. Um, and it's a document that our CEO, Peter, uh, Superintendent Steve and uh, Chair of the School Committee Chris needs to sign. This needs to go in that book um, tomorrow. We can um, put in that book a scanned copy and then if the, the originals get mailed to me, then I can drop the originals off. And that's okay with MSBA. We, we can do it you know, a day or so later. Um, but the, um, the uh, copy of the document needs to be within the submission um, to MSBA. I have a meeting with the chair tomorrow, so I can get the chair, to the, the school committee to sign. Okay, it. fantastic. So, and so, can I give you these? Yeah, sure. And then maybe can Peter s stop by? Can somebody get Peter to stop by the school office? Um, when? Huh? Sir, what time? Anytime. Uh, t tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. My next question is. Is after 3.30 okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I'll have them then. Okay. Okay. All right. Just <laughs> down to your side of the town, you'll see him going by. Just grab it. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that, that'll, be, that'll be excellent. A little tight because you're going to, that's Lance, what Betsy and Kent need to do then is get the scanned copy printed, inserted in the book, but also make an electronic CD of the whole book. So so 3.30 is too tight, too when late? And Peter's <laughs> Peter and Chris were outside, but... Uh, outside right <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Can Peter scan Probably something? come home. Can he scan? I don't know. I'll be more than happy to, to, to get it, bring it around if I have to bring it around tomorrow to get it signed. I'll be more than happy to help you. Yeah. Just, just let me know. Okay. All right, so uh, I had emailed everyone the technology or the uh, proposed technology open meeting policy. I don't know if there was any feedback that we as a committee wanted to provide to them on it. I make a motion that the chair of the school building committee sends a letter to the town administrator saying we do not support this policy uh, in whole. I will okay. second that in a second. This is, after all, the 21st century. It is. Correct. Mm -hmm. it is. And if they're afraid of people sitting in, in public meetings texting, I just think that's unrealistic. We, uh, we all have been charged with jobs to do, and I think we all take that very seriously. And we're not going to sit in meetings and, and play video games on our phones. But I, I think if we don't allow technology at the, at the table, then we're going to be limiting ourselves in a tremendous amount of ways. I'd like to further that by saying that uh, not only are we in the, it, I, I think the main focus of that is violations of the open meeting law, the, the deliberation portion of the open meeting law. I could be incorrect, but that's my understanding as to why this came to fruition. I, I find it no different than when somebody gets up and speaks to somebody else's ear in an open, you know, privately or shuts off the mic to talk. I mean, those are all violations of, a, of the open meeting law. So to really be concerned about what's going on with, te with the technology, if we can't even manage that, it's not. I think it's irrelevant. So, <coughs> you have a second on that? Yeah. Yes. To the vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? All right. I will let them know. I don't know if there was any older new business anyone had for the committee. Uh, any? Well, I'll, I'll keep. The, the open right tasks. yeah some of those uh, are still minutes. open yeah. uh, public comments any further okay seeing uh. <laughs> okay and our next meeting January 7th 
2016. Oh, look at that. Oh. Apologize. No problem. We're all gonna know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going back in time. Oh, okay. 2016. So everyone have a happy new year. Okay. We will see you then. <laughs> have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stain. Thank you, everyone, for.